need a prep talk? Well, you've come to the right place. I'm your host, Amanda Darcy. Join us for the next five minutes, and we promise that you'll walk away feeling energized and ready to try something new in your classroom. I've been wondering, how can we create meaningful learning experiences by pairing text together? So it's my pleasure to welcome back Evan Nisbet from the Los Angeles Unified School District to shed some light on this question for us. Hi there, Evan. Hello, Amanda. I'm so excited about this topic. Awesome, awesome. So Evan, can you tell us what you and your students were experiencing before you started very intentionally pairing texts? Uh, what were some of the pain points, so to say? So you mentioned the word pain. <laughs> I, immediately <laughs> think of, I immediately think of the genre historical fiction because oh, yes. as much as I want to encourage kids to read it, it's just very difficult. They just associate it with, oh, that's the past. It has nothing to do with me. What I decided to do was pair my favorite fiction book with a nonfiction book that would provide background information for students. So then allowing them to immerse themselves more so in the story. I feel like I experienced this myself when I was writing lessons, you know, for a novel study, I found that I needed to do my own research on the history and the setting, you know, to better understand those nuances of the characters and the story and the plot. And so that really resonates with me. So now, you know, Evan, if you want to walk us through how you tackled this in your classroom. So like, how did you go about finding that perfect text pair. So one of the examples of pairing that I did was with The Orphan of Ellis Island, which I happen to have here because it's one of my favorite <laughs> books. Uh -huh. And um, when I went to find the nonfiction pairing, I actually provided three different choices for my students depending on their reading level. So they may not be reading the exact same book, but they're reading a book that they understand. And that's so mm -hmm. important that they have ownership in that. Um, and so we had many discussions depending on which, which uh, book they were reading. And that created a lot of dialogue. And students love nonfiction. As soon as they make that connection, oh, that boy is like my grandfather or my dad and he had to immigrate. You get them sucked into that book and they don't wanna put it down. What it does really is it makes readers wanna read for their own knowledge, not for what's on a test or what's, you know, A to B. They, they're mm -hmm. reading because they want to know what happened. So Evan, you know, you talked a lot about how to pair historical fiction with nonfiction texts. My question for you now is, you know, can you do this with any other subject that's not historical fiction? Absolutely. And I didn't know this till I tried it, <laughs> but it, it was amazing. <laughs> We read a book called The Music of Dolphins, um, mm -hmm. which is about a girl who is raised by dolphins and at some point is discovered by a scientist who wants to take her onto land. And it's an amazing story. Mm -hmm. But prior to reading Music of Dolphins, we read nonfiction books on dolphins. Um, Literacy Pro, Pro had several to choose from. Again, we went and, and based it on the reading levels that, that the students were at, but mm -hmm. they learned about dolphins. And you know, Kids think they know about dolphins, oh, they're cute and smart. <laughs> but when they really research and find out information, they become a lot more savvy in terms of what dolphins can do and their habitat. And so when we read the book, it made, it was an easy transition. Um, and they were super excited to see things that were in the book that they'd already learned about in the nonfiction book. So this kind of pairing can be used in many different ways. We're just scratching the surface. I love how that works so much because it's like, you know, you read one text and you read the other one and then it deepens comprehension of both of those texts. It's just a win-win situation. Keyword deepens, deepens the understanding. And anytime with, with young readers that you can dig deeper, they're all used to the multiple choice quizzes and, mm -hmm. you know, and those are fine for what they are, but it's our responsibility as the teachers to give those questions that really dig deeper. The amount of questions went through the roof. They had this background knowledge. So when we started reading the story, they were like, wait, isn't this the same place that was in the book? Yeah. <laughs> and wow. asking questions is like, the, is the first step to comprehension. So that's amazing. And, and, and they're asking questions that they don't know the answer to. <laughs> because right. students love to ask questions that they <laughs> know the answer to. But when they're authentically engaged in a book that they are rooting for the main character and the main mm -hmm. character is going type of struggle. These are characters that they too can, can relate to because they've been through hardships as well. 
So it just, it just makes it a lot more meaningful to them. Absolutely. I mean, so what I'm taking away mainly is that choosing the right texts that complement each other and work together would help build that background knowledge for a student that doesn't just help them understand that text, but you know, improves their comprehension and helps them make these meaningful connections between so many different things, you know, literature and life and current events. This was so excellent. I mean, I'm starting to think of text pairs in my head. So thank you so much again for this prep talk and for being here with us and sharing with us. Let's chat again soon. My pleasure. Thank you so much, Amanda. And now we'd like to hear more from all of you out there. Have you tried pairing fiction and nonfiction texts? What pairs have you come up with? Have you found that magical pair of texts that really inspired your students? Share it with us in the comments below. 